Oh yeah. So I fixed my bandsaw, I've got a replacement motor, that bit which is just, it's a bolt-on unit, 36 quid, bargain. And I'm very happy that this particular member of the team is back in a game. Uh, so what I've done here is ripped down these nearly two inch, nearly two inch thick by whatever it is, you know, that huge board there. I'm going for finished dimensions of 60 mil in this direction. Uh, and about 30 mil when I get to a plane finish in that direction. So I've set the bandsaw, I've planed one side just to get it flat on both of them. Um, and what I've got to do is put the plane side against the guide and then try and saw off that bit. Now that's a big ask of any bandsaw really. Uh, that is, it's two inches of our Roco, isn't it? <laughs> Let's give it a shot. I think we've got to call that a success really, that's a success, need a bit of planing, not much, a little bit of planing, square it up a bit, good to go, beautiful. Now I'm going to do the other one, and if the bandsaw copes with that, if it's anything like as abuse resistant as the last motor was, then it will, then we're in business, and I've got a nice little bit of a Roco trim there, it's just gold. When that bandsaw finally cannot be repaired anymore, I would invest even in a more expensive model because the stuff you can get done with one of those is really quite something. Right, I'm going to do the other one. So, now I've got my stock prepared here. Uh, and what we've got is, you know, approximately 60 mil wide by 30 deep. And actually, that's come out at about 31 and a half nominal. And I'm okay with it because... Um, well, because I've got these that I salvaged from the four peak. I've kind of refurbed these and varnished them, and I'm going to put them back in the four peak as a sort of a vertical handhold. And when I hold them up against the edge of these, they are the same. They're the same. So I'm happy with the width um, and the depth. It's the same. It's the same. Which is a fluke. All I did was take measurements. <laughs> we all know how badly that can go, don't we? Um, so, that's what I've started with. What I'm going to do now is mark these at 250mm centres and then screw them together through there for the next cunning step. to do. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. What I've got to do now is band saw out the bits in the middle and I've got the basic shape of my handrail. That went okay, I've got to say that went alright. You know, much better use a pillar drill for that. And I've got a piece of pillar drill, but it's garbage. So uh, I just went with a hole saw. Not bad, you know. <coughs> Not bad. It's actually not bad at all. None of the holes seem to be on the piss, or at least not, not dramatically.
not bad. So we've got as far as this. I'm not 100% sure about the size of these. I mean, you know, you can get your knuckles under them, but once they're once it's rounded over there, they might be a little bit too big. I don't know. As long as I don't look out of place, it's okay. Uh, and you can see that because of my uh, hole drilling by hand, there's a few there that aren't quite right. But nothing that will affect the final outcome. I'll just chisel, just gently chip away that with a chisel and smooth it in before I hit it with a router. Uh, and these offcuts are going to be just brilliant, aren't they? They're going to be brilliant. So I think the normal routine here would be to screw the two halves of the grab rails together uh, so that they're independent, you don't need clamps and then you can just go around everything with a router um, I haven't done that because I don't want screw holes in it until I know where I want them to be so I just I could have done that, okay, I haven't done that, it doesn't matter really <coughs> Oh, huh. so that was a 57mm hole saw there just fix the extension bead. Come on, man. There they are then, all routed out. I made a bit of a faux pas, let me see if I can find it. Not, that end. Not there, must be there, there it is, look. See that? Oops! It's because my router is, well it's because I'm an idiot of course, my router is uh, a little bit industrial grade really, it's quite a big heavy one, and it's quite hard to control over surfaces like that where it wants to fall off the end, you know. Uh, moment in attention, and sure enough. So these are the ones that I took out of the uh, forepeak, or the inside of the boat really, somewhere, salvaged. And you can see that in terms of height and dimensions, they're pretty close, they're pretty close. It's springing a bit there, push that down. Yeah, they're pretty close. Certainly they're the same width. Obviously these are a bit boxy. All I've really achieved with the power tools there is saved hours and hours and hours of uh, shaping and working. I'm still going to have to sand this and shape it a bit. If you look at the inside, some of them are really nice, but some of them have got a little step. So I've got to go over it with uh, a file and some sandpaper to get it all nice, but you know what? I think they're the right size. They might be a little heavy, but it's not a bad thing, bearing in mind that they're going to be refinished potentially every year or every couple of years for the next 50 years, so they're going to get thinner, aren't they? Oh yeah, <laughs> they're okay, they're okay aren't they? A little bit square, a little bit boxy, but I'm okay with that. Plenty of meat left for refinishing at a later date. I'm quite pleased with those. And in total, I don't know, including the varnishing, probably six hours work including the varnishing. Nice!